Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing today? Welcome to a late night. What the F is going on, y'all? There is a crazy new update in the Sean Diddy Combs case. Baby, I'm working overtime. We got to catch up. You guys, there is a crazy detail that everyone's overlooked from the media to the blogs to Twitter to Instagram and to TikTok. There is something that everybody overlooked that we got to talk about. There is something that is happening, a reckoning that was unintended, that has been so disastrous that unlike the public opinion, unlike Diddy having to pay allegedly, we don't know how much, but I would assume millions the way he acted and broke to Cassie. There is something that's going on that Diddy did not account for. Now, let me just set this up for you so you know where it's coming from. First of all, we on this page think Diddy lawyers are idiots. The first time they were going against Douglas Wigmore, um, Cassie had this case. She, They were trying to negotiate for settle to settle. Diddy was jerking her around, right? She ended up following. Diddy lost money, reputation, everything. But there might have been a chance he could have come back. The only problem was everybody smelled blood in the water. And by everybody, I mean the people that said that they had been victims of them. So they started filing lawsuits. Douglas Wigmore went back for a second dip. Tyrone Blackburn came and said, oh, no, 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 no. I have a stable of clients right here. He filed a complaint. Diddy's lawyer, and here's the thing. I don't know if a little Rod tried to settle with Diddy. I do know that when he first came to us on social media, he told us that Diddy owed him 50000 and he wanted that 50000 right? Now, a smart man would have paid that 50000 A normal thinking man would have paid that 50000 A less arrogant man would have paid that 50000 Diddy is none of those. Diddy, as you know, did he do it? No, he didn't pay that. 50,000. Little Rod also had other complaints. Okay. He was trying to tell, from what I understand, a lot of people around him. A lot of people are like, oh my God, let me just set this up. Then we can get to the crazy update. A lot of people are like, oh my God, why didn't Little Rod do this? Why he just trying to get money? Why he coming out now? Well, first of all, I would say, because he can. Baby, if you do someone dirty, especially like that, it's just like Cassie in my mind. There is no time limit whenever you feel like it. I don't care if you made peace with it. And on the third Sunday after 50 noon, you know, somebody drank the last of your thing. Your Uber Eats didn't come on time. They never charged you. Sorry, I don't know what happened with that, but I'm back. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Talking trash. Okay, right? To make, the, the, to make a long story short, right? Let me just pick up where I left off, right? People were asking why, uh, okay, thanks guys. People were asking why little Rod waited so long to actually spill tea. Well, the truth is from what I've been hearing on the street, little Rod was trying to find somebody for a while to take his other claim seriously. He thought based on the people around him and what he had, the only way his claims could be taken seriously is if he approached it with money because he was afraid of what people would think, the way people would clown him. But then at the end of the day, he found someone that would not only listen to the claims about his, um, y'all, hold on. Uh, he found someone that would not only listen to his claims about like what Diddy was doing to him, but he found someone that would just listen to him and actually fight for him in a respectful manner. Again, it truly is David taking on Goliath, baby. And from what I hear, Tyrone A. Blackburn is not uh, David. So anyway, right, let's get into this. So what's the shocking thing that actually happened? The first shocking thing is that Diddy did not did not settle with Little Rod, okay? Because, hold on, I'm getting to the big shocking update. Diddy didn't think it could come back to him. People said Diddy was mad. Not in his billionaire friends he hangs around. No, 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 he still needs them to invest and build up his businesses. And no matter what you think with Diddy's businesses, Sean John, that Revolt TV, all that stuff, his billionaire sugar daddies 
are the one that paid for it. You saw the way Clyde was out there scrapping. He was squaring up. You're going to leave my man alone putting on his red dress so uh, Diddy could come to the Grammys. But it got so hot, even Beyonce and Jay-Z were like, uh, Grammy lunch is officially canceled because they didn't know how to tell Diddy he wasn't invited. But hear me out on this, right? People said early on it was always Diddy's plan after he settled with Cassie and he saw the media uh, pile on and he saw everything he did go down the drain. People always said that he was mad. He was angry. I think Tepno's even reported that Diddy was going to start taking down everybody in the music industry because he's like, yo, I'm not the only one. Now, the thing he didn't count on is R Little Rod finding Tyrone a Blackburn and Tyrone being like, well, you ain't the only one, but you're the biggest one. So, mofo, we got to cut the head off the snake and we'll see. We'll, we'll deal with the body later. OK, here's the thing. Diddy didn't care. Diddy literally looked at. Little Rod and said, I'm paying you your 50000 Do what you got to do. Little Rod was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, do what you got to do. Little Rod was like, I got to stand on business. Because at the end of the day, I kind of understand it. If you think about it, if you are violated, waking up naked, crashed out, th things that you did not want to happen, happen. If you are violated, somebody treats you like a lackey. If you out there looking for like, like going to the booby trap and getting stuff. And you literally are literally Cuba Jr. Jr. You looking at tapes. If you are violated and disrespected so much, but you feel like you can't say anything, right? You feel like you don't have any recourse to action and you're violated so much. And then, right, after that violation comes, the only thing you can publicly speak on is the money. And then when you're like, yo, can I just have my money so I can just go on my life, do something different, blah, blah, blah. They laugh in your face. And this is after you spent basically a year being harassed, tortured, violated, disrespected, living in fear. And you're like, can I just get the money? And they tell you, no, I can see how, because you can't at one time think that you could openly speak out about the violation. You just go for the money. But that's not the thing that crashed out, right? Because Diddy didn't care. Diddy literally was like some Denzel training day. I'm King Kong in this bitch. You can't come to me. You're trying to mess with me. Y'all remember that scene from training day? That had me terrified. I was like, Oof, right? Um, But he literally thought he was King Kong. And he really was mad, throwing a temper tantrum, being like, well, everybody that played this game with me that was below him, right? But on his level below him, he's like, let it come out. I don't care. It's not my problem. But here's the one thing, right? Stupid never sleeps. And baby, I don't think Diddy's been getting any sleep because this was now. And here is the crazy update. This is the thing that Diddy did not count on. And this is the thing that is going to destroy his kingdom. Y'all, Diddy ain't just set to take down. And I was reading through the complaint and it became super, super clear. Diddy is not just set to take down the people that did the freak offs with them, the men that he allegedly scheduled, did, you know, did a Jeffrey Epilator on him. Yes, I know the last name, but I don't want to get in trouble. No, 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 no. The people he used to blackmail by having like J. Edgar Hoover level CIA blackmail, Jeffrey Epstein level blackmail. No, 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 no. That's not the issue, right? The issue is the fact that Titty is about to take down the whole music industry, including the part he didn't want to. His billionaire friends are hot. They are mad. Because at the end of the day, no matter what he's into, he's supposed to be able to control that ship. He works for them. They are his master. You know that thing, beloved, know your master. They are Diddy's master. How is this going to happen? Not by a tell-all. Because, baby, when I said the whole music industry, I mean the whole music industry. Let's get into this. Because I was looking through um, the paperwork. Um, you got to think about what was happening. By the way, I also did some work. If you guys didn't watch my last live, uh, Tyrone A. Blackburn, the lawyer that uh, did the complaint, he filed an amended complaint. And in that amended complaint, he pointed out exactly how and I mean exactly how um, Sean Hawley 
Chalice Recording Studio seem to be caught in intellectual dishonesty or what I like to call a bold face lie. There's definitive proof that Diddy was at the scene of the crime. There's definitive proof that basically it seems like, unless I'm mistaken, Sean Hawley put out false statements. It was proven there that Diddy was there, that it happened, blah, 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 blah. Sean Hawley, it seems like, is running around wanting to retract, wanting to do whatever. Who knows? I do know, right? I do know that um, uh, Sean Hawley did say, it is my understanding that Sean and Justin were at a completely different part of the studio when the shooting victim ran into the bathroom. That has been proven in the amended complaint to be a lie. They also said NBC News has not confirmed whether Combs or Justin were interviewed. Captain Kelly Munoz said Saturday the LAPD would not comment on the pending civil lawsuit or any specific allegations. Representatives for Justin on February 27th denied the allegations filed in the original complaint, which they called absurd and lies, and said there would be legal consequences for all defamatory statements made about the Combs family. How are you threatening someone? For filing a lawsuit, I guess we waiting on those legal consequences uh, to hit because Tyrone Blackburn went back and amended. But let me tell you how Diddy's messed up the whole music industry and his billionaire friends are cutting him free and lawyers are retracting, pulling back support, doing whatever. OK, right. Think about what was actually listed in that and why that's so damaging to Little Rod. We understand that he didn't care about the little people going down, but let's talk about the big ones, right? Think about what, what Little Rod actually said. One, everything in Diddy's house is taped. Two, he liked having freak-offs in his home, hotels, but also he liked having freak-offs in studios, okay? He liked having parties in studios where there are pictures of blank workers dancing with Diddy. And there's also pictures of, well, girls that don't have 18 candles on their cake. I'm speaking into quoted YouTube, right? There's all this stuff in there and it's salacious. Seems like it's true, but it's very salacious. But the one thing that comes across in Cassie's, right? The one thing that comes up in Cassie's lawsuit and then little Rod's lawsuit and even in Tiffany Red's uh, uh, confessions. And also when you hear people talk, did he like to have a lot of parties in his home? We see why, because of what little Rod says can be true. There's cameras everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. If you believe that did he uses what he gets to blackmail people? Well, then it makes sense. But regardless of why he likes to have these parties at home, Maybe he feels he can control the environment or record the environment. He has them at home, places of abode, places that feel home away from home. A lot of times when things were happening, whether we're talking about what happened to Cassie or Little Rod, there was work, there was recording, or there were parties. But these parties weren't just regular parties. They were bad boy parties. Just follow me. I'm going somewhere, right? They were bad boy parties. Okay? Now, bad boy, Diddy was reinventing himself as brother love. I think he was doing it just to get like another uh, uh, income in that people that were suing. Because don't forget, he gave everybody's publishing away at bad boy. He gave it back if they signed an NDA. Let's also not forget that Cassie was suing bad boy records. So Diddy, because he's an expert in making sure people don't get a penny from him. He got a new idea. He said, you know what? I'm going to invent myself as brother love, right? And I'm going to start a new record label, Love Records, because once in his mind, I'm thinking he settled with Cassie. Anything that happened under Bad Boy Records, yeah, Bad Boy Records and their insurance would have to play, pay. But Love Records, Love Records is something new entirely. Love Records doesn't have any uh, stains on it yet. Hold on, I'm getting somewhere. Y'all going to flip out, right? So he started Love Records. But the thing is, he needed, like he always does, the support of his billionaire sugar daddies, right? Um, you scratch my back, I'll bend over, like whatever, right? It's a, it's a term of art. He needed his billionaire sugar daddies, or he needed a record label 
or someone to finance them because he couldn't move funds from Bad Boy. And at the end of the day, how many funds were there in Bad Boy? You can't keep them intermingled. So what did he do? He did what everybody did. He found funding. He found funding, right? In uh, Motown Records. You see, Motown Records, and I think at that point, the CEO or the head of Motown Records had a lot of faith in Love Records. And they said, you know what? We're going to fund you. So when there were parties that they were written off as promotional, when there were this, when there was that, when they were buying the girls, when they were doing it, was coming out of, we would imagine, marketing budgets, this and that. I mean, you get budgets for parties and Diddy's known for throwing parties. So that's when I said, hmm, Motown Records at one time was a CEO called Ethia, Ethiopia. And I said, well, Motown Records is under a parent company, Universal M Music Group. And I said, who was CEO of Universal Music Group at that time? Ah, Lucian Grange. And he's the one that okayed Diddy, okayed Ethiopia to okay the fun release to Motown Records because Motown Records is a subsidiary of Universal Music Group and you would have to get permission. But ultimately, the permission is just getting the funds. So Universal Music Group, right, okays and gives funds either directly to Diddy for Love Records and everything Love Records is doing, or they give the money to Ethiopia with Motown Records to give Motown Records money for all these social things that Love Records and Diddy are doing. So why is that interesting? Because in the lawsuit, it clearly outlines that according to Little Rod, and this should be able to be verified by Diddy's home footage, I'm guessing, I don't know, the head of Universal Music Group, the current CEO, Lucian Grange, was paying late night visits to Diddy's house. Frequent late night visits. Now, Little Rod says, I don't know what they did, but I know that they went into the bedroom, Diddy's bedroom, and I know they stayed there for hours. At the same time, Ethiopia, the then head of Motown Records, would go to see Diddy late at night. He doesn't know what they saw. Little Rod doesn't know what he saw, but he knows that she would spend hours in Diddy's room. These were the chief financial backers for Love Records and all of its social stuff. Are you seeing where I'm going now? Let's just go a little bit further, okay? So all that's happening. But the thing is, do you guys know anything about uh, employee liability? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, okay, it doesn't matter. When Lucian... And also that girl, Ethiopia, this is the one thing I keep slipping my mind, but I want to talk about really quick. Just, it's a tangent, but let's go, right? Because it, it loops up. You know, Ethiopia, she became head of Motown Records in August. To, this is when Diddy says that that shooting had nothing to do with them. She became head of Motown Records in August of 2022. She, mind you, sorry, what all this was going on, Diddy was trying to settle with Cassie while all this was going on or toward the end of it. So you have, um, no, actually, no, why all this was going on in September. So maybe that's why Diddy allegedly was so mad and loose cannon. So she got hired as the head of Motown Records under Universal Music Group, the same Universal Music Group that is going to war right now. And it's the reason why TikTok does not have any like a third of its catalog has been pulled down. UMG. This just keeps this in mind. This all makes sense. So Ethiopia was the head of Motown. August 2022, she got appointed. In September of 2022, right? There was a uh this alleged shooting. Okay. In November of 2022, Ethiopia was fired. How do you get put as head of CEO and in three months, 
zero months, I'm sorry, two and a half months, zero months after the shooting, you get let go. I don't know. It, it leads me to believe that that shooting actually happened just the way Little Rod said it did because too many things happened. Too many things. But forget about that. Let's get back into this, right? So we're doing all that mess now. Universal Music Group funded, Ethiopia funded. A lot of that money, it's been rumored, were used for these social gatherings that had all this Sodom and Gomorrah going on. As a matter of fact, if you gave a travel budget and a freak off happened, if you did this, if you did that, then Universal Music Group may be liable for civil damages. But see, that's where everybody was looking left. The reason why Diddy's billionaire friends are abandoning him and everybody is slowly, the, the narrative is changing is because did, what Diddy did and the way he said, I don't care, let everybody figure their own way out. Meek, you figured your way out. Usher, I seen you at Super Bowl. You got a few dollars, right? He was naming Stevie J, please, right? He didn't care. Everybody can figure their own stuff out. Even his own son, Justin, he could have settled and at least gotten Justin's name removed from that suit. He wanted, he didn't care. He's like, everybody can just fit in what they fit in. Interesting enough, I see Justin, hold on y'all. I see Justin hasn't been around his daddy lately. Mm. Diddy didn't care. Diddy did not count on how far up his recklessness would go. Because the one thing that has everybody scrambling at Universal Music Group, who already overplayed their hand and their importance when they removed their songs off of TikTok. Hold on, I'm going somewhere, right? When they removed their songs off of TikTok, so many artists struggled. Why? Because as much as they're like, oh, tick Universal Music Group is like, we're not getting paid fairly by TikTok. TikTok was the number one thing that was getting artists going, songs going. Ooh, sorry, guys, all this stuff. I got to bring you this tea. I'm going somewhere. Let me just finish, right? Universal Music Group, it looks like, needed TikTok more than TikTok needed Universal Group, right? But here's the thing. Universal Music Group's artists are really really upset because look at even Nicki Minaj's album. That was a good album. Look at when it got pulled off of TikTok, not just her album, but everybody from Universal, like the charts just, they just started dropping in the charts because TikTok is where people discover music. It's where people hear music, people want. Okay. So we got that right. Little Rod said there's cameras everywhere. There's Universal Music Group that's going on. Diddy said F like all these rappers. They can figure their own it out. I'm saving myself. So where was his dumb, stupid error? Where was it? Well, let's think about this, right? There were freak-offs done during parties that Universal Music Group and Love Records allegedly funded. There was drug use because Diddy's assistant's job was keeping him drunk all the time. There was violence. There was shootings. Basically, it was like a bad mafia gangland P movie. It was just bad, right? Here's the thing that Universal Music Group didn't count on Diddy, the perfect storm. All your artists are sick of you, but who cares, right? Because it's so hard for artists to get out of contracts, right? So who cares? They can stay mad. Or can they? Because the one detail everybody missed is something when I was watching a Kanye video, when he was complaining about Adidas, getting him with all these dumb clauses, and now they're like taking this stuff and ada, ada, ada. And I was like, you've been doing this dance with Adidas for so long. But there's one thing that stuck in my head. How is Adidas able to copy GA sneakers, sell them and not give him a penny? Ah, uh, it's called the morality clause. And most contracts, especially record contracts, have a morality clause. That morality clause is if you do anything to damage the brand, if you do anything that could be considered to the average person uh, to be uh, uh, to, to be immoral, if you do anything, right? That, you know, that if you do anything that could be looked at as immoral, right? Then if you do anything that could be considered immoral, then 
the contract can be broken. Now, usually that's what record companies and, you know, athletes have memorial clauses, recording artists, movie stars, even Kanye making sneakers. It's a standard thing, right? I'm sure the only person that don't got a morality clause is Diddy. But a lot of things that people don't realize is this. Morality clauses are always put in because they always think it's the artist that's going to mess up. It's the creator. Big businesses don't mess up like that. Or do they? Because, baby, morality clauses always go both ways. Diddy, through his arrogance, Diddy, through his ineptitude, Diddy, through his, oh, I don't care, literally bit the hand that fades him because there is morality clause in every contract, I would imagine, with artists that are in Universal Music Group. And there is a gang of artists that want to get out of their contracts, either because they got a bad deal or because they don't like the way TikTok, Universal Music Group is handling TikTok and they want to go to another group that could at least get their music popping again. They want out. And Diddy didn't know it, but he gave them the way out. Think about it, right? I wonder, why is Universal Music Group and Motown Records so quiet in all of this? Why? These are huge groups. These are people that need to be for the morality clause up front. Why are they so quiet? Why is Motown Records so quiet? Everybody else has commented on it. Everybody's been screaming. Why are the actual record companies so quiet? Well, I would think they're so quiet because maybe they have a shit show going on. Maybe this is the time that if any artists are, okay, I would just imagine, if any artists are upset, discontent, or whatnot, they can literally, right? Go to UMG, Universal Music Group, and they can go to Motown Records, whatever they're under. And they can literally use this Diddy's lawsuit, even if it's not proven guilty in court. They just need to know, is there evidence that it happened, right? Because we're not talking about what's criminally bad. That's something Diddy has to worry about. We're talking about what is enough to break the morality clause. What Kanye did and his rant was enough to break a morality clause. So where are we now, right? We have, okay, the artists, let's just say they have their lawyers contact Universal Music Group. And let's just say they have their lawyers contact, right, Motown Records. And they say, listen, we want to audit of the books. Did you guys give a penny to any social gathering, to any hotel suites, to anything in any way that contributed to freak offs, sexual harassment, out of, out of, out of, this and the third? If the answer is yes, they can be let out. They can make a case that we want to be let out of our contract for the morality clause, right? Let's also not forget they can actually say, did any money commingle or touch any of the RICO charges coming down for, for Diddy? Any of the racketeering, um, uh, organized crime, collusion, whatever it is, right? Was your money involved in any RICO activities? And that goes to money they gave Diddy that was invested in things that people might not want to be involved in. You guys. <laughs> If this is true, right, would anybody want their money tied up in that? Would anybody want their contract tied up in that? Would anybody want their image tied up in that? Do I want to be an artist for Universal Music Group and they're the ones that were funding Diddy? Do I want to be an artist under Motown Music Group and they're the ones that's funding Diddy, right? How would that not be a clear violation of morality clause? You guys, as much as Diddy was like, oh, well, and he thought he was screwing over everybody under him, it looks like he has screwed over the big people, the people in charge. He has left this gaping loophole that Universal Music Group, and I would imagine right now they're fighting around with their heads cut off, probably trying to investigate, probably getting the accountants, this, that. And literally, here's the thing. It's show me 
that not it's not even saying did any money go there you can go as an artist and be like yo show me show me right now show me that there is no uh that there's no uh that not a dime of the money went toward diddy's freak offs or his rico mess show me not one dime do you see they have the bird in the show show me not if they cannot prove that then that is a hole to get out universal music group who's already at their weakest time with all their artists being up, uh, uh, upset because they went to war with TikTok and it looks like they lost. Motown Records, who's already going through their own thing, all because association with Diddy, and these record companies are owned by billionaires, are set to have a mass exodus of uh, artists leave just because Diddy opened up the morality clause. I'm told a bunch of artists are looking toward that and there's going to be even more that goes. You guys, this whole situation is rotten to the core. And it surprises me that Diddy bought it on himself. Why did he just not settle? But then again, that's the logical point. The human part of me is good thing he didn't settle because he's going to have his day in court. And when he thinks things can't get any worse, baby, those billionaires might have you walk like hopping around like a bunny rabbit, like they did Meek Mills, right? They might have be hosting your coming out parties, Diddy's words, not mine. They might be doing all that stuff. But the one thing I do know about billionaires, the one thing they will not allow anyone, be it their sister, mother, brother, lover, they don't care. They will not allow you to mess with their money. And Diddy, in his arrogance, thinking he was hurting those below him, has officially made the biggest mistake of his case. That and hiring Sean Holly and Jim Bobby Sternheim. I'm not saying they're bad lawyers. They just seem to be bad lawyers for this case. But I don't know. Maybe there's a bigger plan. Maybe there is a bigger plan, right? There is a bigger plan. You guys, so much of what went on with Diddy was morally reprehensible. It doesn't matter whether they were consenting adults. And Little Rod and Cassie both say we weren't. Little Tiffany Red, the girls that are suing Diddy, but Tyrone Blackburn and also Wigmore, it wasn't. What Diddy did was morally reprehensible. The cameras everywhere, the drugging, the taping, the bang bangs, the assistants running around acting like it's the final scene in, in Scarface with Colombian dancing desks and Tucci, Titchi. I don't know, that pink stuff that looked like Pepto Bismol everywhere. Go look at the documents. They got pictures of all that stuff. I felt like I was in season one of Narcos. Diddy has now made the biggest mistake of his life. I don't know what's going on with Diddy. I do know that he needs somebody close to him to pull him back from the edge because, baby, it don't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. This stuff started with Clive Davis and Andre, I mean, L.A. Reed. It flowed down the Diddy. Diddy messed up because, baby, he has opened the gates of a portal that instead of goes to the pits of hell, opens up and sucks down all the evil that's on this earth. Y'all listen, what y'all think of this? Let me, oh, really quick, hold on. Julie Bird, thank you again for becoming the newest member. Um, Mixed Chick Samantha, thank you so much for becoming the newest member. S. Washington, thank you so much for becoming the newest member. And Evans, thank you so much for becoming the newest member. Hey, Mr. Panka, uh, Pank Pankaj Singh, Good morning, sister. Make me moderator. Please pin my link. I, I don't know how to pin the link. Moderator. Is, are you feds? Were you sent by Diddy? Also, mass sequence. Thank you so much. You said, is there a bad spiritual aspect to this? 100% there's a bad... <laughs> 100% there was a bad spiritual aspect. Every time I start talking about Diddy and I'm like, whatever, my lives want to go out, things want to go off. This is it. Listen, oh, that's another thing that I've been looking into. 
What is the link between Corey Gamble, little baby, Rick Rubin, Diddy, and all those people? I don't know. I don't know. Because usually, I first I thought Corey, Corey was corny but harmless, you know, um, sitting there probably in front in Chris's room in his silk pajamas while he waiting for mama to come home with the fan blowing. Help me. Probably dancing to Jodeci. Tell me what you want, right? I just see him like, uh, 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 dancing to Jodeci with like the, the silk flowing through. But now that we see, don't forget, Corey Gamble's super tight with Diddy. He's super tight with Little Baby. Little Baby's super tight with Rick Rubin, Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft is super tight with Meek Mills, right? Diddy's at the center of it. Let's also not forget that Corey Gamble used to be a tour manager slash handler for Justin Bieber. Did y'all know that? He used to be a tour manager slash handler for Justin Bieber. You see where this goes? He got deep roots in Atlanta, but nobody knows, like Kanye said, who Corey is. Nobody knows Corey's family. Nobody knows where Corey comes from. But he's super tight in this whole thing. Now, judging by the way Tory is, Corey, Tory, uh, Corey Gamble is, I don't know what that man's into. I know sometimes his purse is bigger than Chris uh, Jenner's, but that said, we don't care who people sleep with because at the end of the day, Chris Jenner like it. You see the, you see the, the material. She likes a Caitlyn Jenner. She likes a, she likes a feminine man. Chloe likes a feminine man too. Ain't nothing wrong with feminine men. I'm just saying, y'all seen. Uh, Tristan and Corey Gamble booed up at the basketball games. He'd be asking like he's the basketball wife. But that is a very, very interesting question, right? Um, yeah, listen, I don't know. Robert Kraft was caught in a bathhouse looking for happy endings. I did not forget. But that is Meek Mill's bestie. Rick Rubin, Robin Kraft, Diddy, uh, Lucian Grange, all those people. I don't know. I don't know. I know that where there's smoke, there's fire. And right now, baby, this is a smokehouse. We should actually look into Corey Gamble just to see his connections uh, to everybody. But I do find the Diddy, Atlanta, Usher's from Atlanta. But even besides that, the fact that Corey was handler for Justin Bieber. And again, what did Kanye say about him? I mean, yeah, at that time I thought he was hating. But now I'm like, wait, there actually might be something to this. Um. Well, you always wondered if Rick Rubin was one of the executives Cassie had to service. That is a good question, Shadow. That is a good question. Who is G? G is Justin's friend that went into the bath, was in the bathroom with Justin and Diddy, and they walked out. And G was, according to uh, what's his name, Little Rod, was actually shot. He was actually one of Justin's good friends. Do you want to hear something else though that I remember hearing off the streets? I wonder if I can say it. So this mess about there were some rumors going around a couple of years ago that Justin was like something about an escort agency or whatever down in Atlanta. Now, I always thought it was BS because I'm like, Justin, whatever. But when you think about it, Justin got a lot of things in his name that his daddy does. A lot. And Justin, yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave that for a different video because I got to explore that more. So wipe your minds clean of it. But I don't know. There's something going on and we are going to get to the bottom of it. There is something going on, right? Um, there's something going on and we got to get to the bottom of it. Again, I'm not saying that these people are connected or interrelated. I'm just because they're not mentioned in Little Rod's lawsuit. But I am saying that Little Rod has said that he has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of footage. He came prepared. And all Diddy had to do was just give him an ounce of respect, just an ounce of respect. And just pay him his money so he could at least go home and go to sleep at night. But instead, because Diddy seems really cruel, just like he was with Cassie, he decided that he was going to take this final offer to be as cruel as possible and strip him of anything he could use to have any type of self-esteem or self-worth or anything to feel like he won. And he stripped it away. And he literally, just like Cassie, 
pushed him too far. And now Diddy, trying to make sure he kicked down and everybody else suffered, is literally about, forget bite the hand to feed you, baby. You about to saw that thing off. It's about to be the purge. Uh, it's about to be the purge in here. But you guys, you have to wonder, what is going on? Why would Diddy do that? And why wouldn't they account when Diddy said he wasn't settling, right? I assume, did they try to settle with him? I don't know. But why wouldn't Diddy actually say, wait a second, there's morality clauses at play. The more this becomes a lawsuit and if it goes to court, there is going to be a mass exodus of artists that are unhappy with their contract and they found a way out. Just like when, just like when Kanye uh, thought he got one over on uh, Adidas, or not one over, but a thing. Just like when that happened with Kanye, uh, what happened? He thought they had an agreement. They went and kikied, had drinks, and then he found out that they're not paying him through the morality clause. That morality clause is heavy, and it's surprising to me that Diddy would put his billionaire friend's income at risk over the morality clause. When at the end of the day, they can all just settle. I really don't know what's going on. I do not believe Diddy's innocent. That's what makes this so confusing. I don't think you're innocent. The only time I will fight things this hard is if I was innocent. And I don't believe that Diddy is actually innocent. I don't believe he's innocent at all. Also, there's a few other things going on. We have Sean Hawley. Sean Hawley is a... Uh, literally saying that that shooting at Chala Studios didn't happen, even though there is a bunch of evidence that the shooting at Chala Studios actually did happen, right? Then the one thing that we got is that Young Miami mess. Because don't forget, Young Miami has a show coming out on BET. Didn't he get Young Miami so dirty? You know he could have also paid for Young Miami not to have her name in those documents. And each time... He 100% chose to do it. Why is he, again, he's so busy bringing everything down. Did Is he about to bring the head, the CEO of, uh, what do you call it? Of uh, uh, the CEO of, oh, Universal Music Group. Is he about to bring him down? All because he didn't want to pay that little bit of money and he was so arrogant. He thought everybody else should suffer. Yo, what if I was... Like I said, if I was friends with Diddy, I would get the hell out of there. He seems like he is on a con uh, he seems like he is on a kamikaze mission. He's taken everyone down. I think he wanted that, but Diddy didn't want the people higher up to go down. They're, they're saying that if this goes to court, his billionaire safety net will be gone. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good of friends he is with Lucian Grange or Ethiopia especially Lucian Grange, the head of Universal Music Group. They are not going to let their whole life's work and their fortunes go down the drain just because Diddy's ego and maybe self-destructive tendencies were actually doing that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. The reason I wanted to bring this up to y'all is everybody's been overlooking this one thing, the morality clause when it comes to contracts. You may people like Universal Group, they don't know what they're getting into. But then again, I don't think that Diddy gave them the choice of settling. They couldn't have. They really honestly couldn't, y'all. Um, Planner Girl with the T said, Do y'all remember when the medium said some stuff about Diddy will be coming out my oh Sloan Bella? I remember that. Y'all listen, me and my cousin were talking, and we were like, should we get readings from Sloan Bella? Everything she unless she like literally knows people on the inside. Everything she's predicted, even down to the month that Diddy goes down, has been spot on. She said this March will be this day. And hasn't, didn't it come out in March? Right? Oh, Miss Ruffin said, have you visited Sloan Bella's YouTube? I have not visited. Thank you for so much for the super chat, Mrs. Ruffin one. I have not visited Sloan Bella's YouTube channel but I'm about to go over there right now when we get off a of live because maybe she was right about that. What else is she right about? I just hope she'll never say anything about me unless it's good. But honestly, what is going on with that? On top of that, we got Usher being named in that lawsuit, pledging his allegiance and jumping over to do some weird stuff with Russell Simmons and Bally. Did y'all see those pictures of uh, Usher? I'll do a video about this tomorrow morning. 
Um, because I really want to focus on that. The pictures are weird. Why is that little girl in the pictures with them? And why is it like super, super grown? And I'm not blaming the little girl. I'm saying like the pictures, why is she in the mix? It's giving weird. It's giving weird. And the thing is with Usher, just because he puts on a good show, we need to start separating the person from the reality. Usher also has been accused of, right? Usher also has been accused of, um, Usher has also been aware of, um, uh, uh, he's been aware of, well, sued for giving people her, giving people SGGs. I don't know. Now I'm starting to look at everybody. And I mean everybody that's involved. Y'all, listen. 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 All I want to say is, it's just food for thought. Listen, I will say this information is based upon information and belief. Diddy does maintain his innocence 100%, right? Um, oh, that's so sweet. Tasha Smith just gifted five Tisa Tells memberships. Thank you, Tosha. Everybody say hi, Tosha. Thank you, Tasha. I appreciate this. I really, really do. Thank you for supporting my channel so much. I will say that. Can I see who you gifted? It just says you gifted five. You did gift. Oh, wait, here we go. You gave Yvonne one, J990, Cherry Honey Ricola, Mrs. Mercer, and JB. You gave, y'all, everybody say a big thank you to Tosha for gifting five memberships. That's so appreciated. Um, that's so sweet. Thank you. But I will say that um, at the end of the day, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Diddy. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Diddy maintains his innocence. He says that not only will he be proven innocent, but there will be repercussions to anyone that says defamatory statements against the, uh, against the Combs. We're going to have to wait to see what happens in court. Star, uh, Star Trek ambassador, thank you. For the uh, generous super chat said, Sloan predicted J and B will be exposed in 2036. I don't know about that. I don't either. Sloan, she might have been put in 20 or 10, 2036. Baby, we might have World War IV before 2036. I don't know about that one, but but I like to believe that she meant 2020 sticks. If Diddy's going down their deck, I don't know about that. I feel, well, you know what? Let me keep my mouth shut because I didn't even know about Diddy. They had me thinking Diddy was a good dude. So maybe I need to keep my mouth shut, but I don't know about Beyonce. I really don't. Um, Miss Goddess K said they got dirt on Usher. Maybe, but Usher, you don't remember when he was younger and his mom gave a citizenship to Diddy. And then Gene Dill said that uh, Usher ended up in the hospital for bleeding. I believe it was. And so the mom came and like got Usher back. Thank you so much, Miss Goddess K, for the generous chat. Um, yeah, I think Usher's been through some things. I think he's seen some things, you know. But for him to be Key King and um and Bally with Russell Simmons, he's definitely sending a message 100 percent And my question is why. Anyway, y'all, listen, I wanted to give you all that tea. I'll make a shorter video tomorrow morning. I know that y'all like the little short condensed ones. And hopefully tomorrow will be another up heavy upload day too, okay? Talk to y'all later. Bye.